In today's video, I am going to show you how to add custom measurements into patterns. So first I'll show you how to create measurement files, and then I will show you how to put those measurement files into an actual pattern. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you would like to see more videos on how to make your own CAD sewing patterns. So first on our screen, we don't need to have a pattern loaded, um, but we're going to hit measurements at the top. And we're going to hit Open Seamly Me. All right, so this is Seamly Me, and we want to create a new measurement file. So hit New. Um, I'm doing mine in inches because I set up my Seamly Me program in inches. And then I just hit OK. All right, so you can do pretty much any measurement under the sun on this. Um, the best thing I suggest at the beginning is to add known measurements. If you want, you can also add custom though. So these two buttons are going to be the most used. So we're going to hit add known, and they already have almost every measurement under the sun preloaded in here and what it's called, which is so helpful, especially when you're new or if you already know what you're looking for. The best thing about this though is when you click on them, it shows you what that measurement actually is. So on this first one, A01, it says height. So if we look to the number one, it's the full height. So they all are all organized into categories. So this first one is direct height. So the entire body, just from the floor, a direct height to something. The next one is direct width. So just straight across, not following the curve of the body, just a direct width across. This one is indentations. So depending on what you are sewing, if you need to know the indentations for different types of darts and such, <clears throat> there is an indentation measurement you can add. It even has hand measurements if you are doing any sorts of gloves. Um, foot measurements as well for socks or shoe patterns head for hat and masks, circumference and arc I use a lot. These are actual circumferences and it's not just regular circumferences. It also has specifically front circumferences as opposed to back and then it even gets into half circumferences. So then once we get out of circumference and arc there's also vertical measurements of the torso in the front or back and with the hips added. Horizontal is just lengths across, front or back. The bust has all sorts of different measurements you can add in. This is especially if you're doing couture wear or um, anything really, really fitted for women. Balance, you can add balance measurements. You can add arm measurements, bent or straight even arm size, leg specific measurements, and then there's a separate category for crotch and rise, specific to men's tailoring, historical and specialty measurements, and then pattern making measurements, so dart widths and things. So um, let's just add a couple basic ones just to see how this goes. Um, let's just add measurements for like a really super basic t-shirt. On the, um, I always do my horizontal and then measurements, and then vertical measurements. So I would start with all of my circumferences. So I'm going to open that, and let's just add a few things. So let's say, um, let's say waist. So I'll click on that, and it adds it. And then let's say high hip. If I look at the picture, that tells me it's number eight, so I just click number eight. And then let's see, let's go ahead and add the bust. So four would be the bust looking at this picture. So we click it, and these are all going to be added. Let's do a couple vertical now. So I'm just going to open vertical. So let's just say, um, since we did the waist, to bu waist bust and high hip, I believe, are what we did. The waist to the bust is ten, it looks like. Bust to waist. And then let's clip through and get to maybe like the high hip or something. Here we go. So waist to high hip looks like 33. Waist to high hip, 33. And that's just the back one. So there should be one that's just waist to high hip. And it 
doesn't look like that is. Um, so we'll just go ahead and do waist to high hip front. So now that we've added those, they all show up here. You can expand these if you want to see what this says. This is the name that will show up while you are creating the pattern. But and this is the full name of it, kind of like the description. And then this calculated value is what we want to put in there. So let's say the bust is 34. We just type in 34. If the waist is 28, we type in 28. High hip, let's 36. Bust to waist, there are measurements already in there. If you had done a full measurement of um, like the waist to the neck front and the neck front to bust, this would auto-calculate it for you. But you can also delete that formula and just say maybe it's 8 inches. And then your waist to high hip, let's say 8 inches again just for the sake of putting a number in there. All right, so when you have every measurement you want, you can also add custom measurements if you did not find what you needed in the add known. So you hit this yellow plus button, add custom, and you name it whatever you want. There are no spaces allowed. You have to do an underscore. So let's just say since we didn't find a waist to high hip that was not just specifically front or back, let's put that in here. So we'll say, oh, my caps box is on, waist to high hip. And then we could just write in that number, let's say 8. And that adds that measurement in here. We can also type it in here with spaces if you need it in there. Um, okay, so if these are all of our measurements, at this point we would hit save. And we're going to call it, let's just say example measurements. Hit save, and now this exists as a measurement file. So we can actually exit out of this. And then if we wanted to create a pattern, we need to go to, let's hit new, and let's just say example t-shirt, or just example measurements, why not? And it's in inches, because again, I just made my measurements in inches, so I want everything to match up. Hit OK. All right, so now I need to go to measurements, and I'm going to load an individual. And so I can load the measurements from any one that I've measured because they're all saved here. So if we say example measurements, those are now loaded into this specific pattern. So I can start putting stuff in. And the way that I'm going to use those measurements is I click on anything that's going to make a line. So let's just do this basic point at a distance. And let's click on our start point. We'll just go straight up. So our angle, you can again put whatever you want, but in the length, instead of typing a number in here, we'll hit F of X and delete that, and every measurement from our file is now in here with the name, and we don't even need to know the number. So let's just say bust to waist, hit OK, OK, let's zoom fit best, and there we go. Without even knowing the number, it's now saved, and that's the bust to waist. Um, if I wanted to switch to someone else, Let's just draw another line just so we can see what this is doing size-wise. Okay, so this is someone. Um, let's go to measurements. We could load someone else. So hit load individual, and let's see. I'm sure this bodice measurement has that. Look, and it automatically changes it for a different person. I'll do that one more time, and I'll get, the, um, I'll get this out of the way so you can see it happening. So if I switch back to the example, example measurements. Bam, and it changes itself based on the measurements. A few tips that I would recommend would be when you're creating your measurements, I would make measurements specifically only for that certain pattern. If you want, you could upload every single measurement. You could go, let's see, let's open one. Let's say edit current. You could go through and add every single measurement into here and measure yourself and put them all in and just have them there ready to go. If you want to do that, go ahead. And that way you'll have all of your measurements for any of the pattern you want. Um, but if you fluctuate measurements at all, I would not really recommend that. But also, you're not going to use these measurements all the time. You might never use some of these. So it's just a lot of time to sit there and do all of that. Um, what I like to do is make measurement files for each pattern that I'm making because then if I decide to use this pattern to make it for someone else, I can hit File, Save As, and type in this next person's name. I already have all the values that I need only for this one pattern, and then I just save it as a new file with that one person 
only for the measurements that I actually need for that pattern instead of getting twice as many measurements as I might actually need to take for something. To me, it just saves a lot of time. Again, if you're only using this for your own measurements and you just want to put all of them into one, you don't have to use every single ma measurement in a pattern. Um, so if you want to put them all in there and have them ready to go, go for it. But just be aware that it will take you some time, obviously, to do that. And that's about it. If you have any questions about any of this, please feel free to comment below. I hope this has gotten you excited about making some of your own patterns. And I will be uploading some new videos soon with some stuff you can make with this. Bye.